Welcome to this Equestrian Vaulting USA video series designed to inspire and educate our vaulting community on the One Star Compulsories. This video is about the swing forward with legs closed. First, we will outline the essence and mechanics of the swing, followed by a more in-depth explanation of how to train and coach this compulsory. We will finish with guidance and tips from our kind judges. This video is made possible by the donations from the generous members of Equestrian Vaulting USA. Thank you. The Essence and Mechanics The essence of all compulsories is harmony with the horse. The essence that is specific to the swing forward with legs closed is quality of movement. The swing forward legs closed is a dynamic exercise and comprises four biomechanical phases. First, the energy phase starts in seat astride and includes the backswing. Second is the swing and stem phase, which starts when the body loses contact with the horse and the hands are the only point of contact. Third is the lowering phase, which starts at the point of maximum elevation. Fourth is the landing phase, which starts when touching the horse with legs or pelvis and ends in seat astride, the energy phase. From the seat astride with the hands on the handles, the vaulter generates energy by taking the legs forward and up and then swinging the legs down and backward while moving the upper body forward and down. The hands are on the handles. Swing and stem phase. As soon as the body loses contact with the horse, except for the hands on the handles, the legs are stretched in line with the longitudinal axis of the vaulter and swung upwards fluently to reach a vertical handstand position for a score of a 10 with fully extended arms and shoulders and closed legs. The upper body is maintained in a physiologically correct posture throughout. The pelvis and shoulder axis are parallel to the shoulder axis of the horse. The lowering phase. Following a momentary handstand position, the vaulter moves the shoulders forward to keep the center of gravity above the middle of the supporting area, the hands, while absorbing the canter movement with the arms and maintaining the arm extension. The legs and body are lowered slowly in a controlled, fluid, and well-balanced movement with a constant speed and correct body alignment along the longitudinal axis and shoulders and pelvis are in a right angle to the surcingle. The vaulter has a soft, upright, and centered landing in the seat astride with the upper body vertical. Remember that the swing forward with the legs closed shall be performed fluently. Hi everyone, I'm Bianca Harris. I'm a senior two-star vaulter, certified personal trainer, and well on my way to also being a certified strength and conditioning specialist. I love vaulting, I love strength training, and strength training completely changed the way that I live, vault, and feel in my body. I hope it can do the same for you. For our forward swing, we're going to focus on two different muscle groups. We're gonna focus on our chest and shoulders, and we're also gonna focus on our lower back and glutes. So the exercises we're going to be doing for our forward swings are an incline bench press and a reverse hyper. In this video, we're going to take a look at some forward flight examples, some great drills to do, and then the very specific positioning for each part of the forward swing. So let's get started. The first thing we're going to look at is head positioning. One of the most important things in a forward swing is being able to keep your head in a neutral position the whole time. So Lizzie's going to show us some variations um, and things to watch out for. So here she's in a strong neutral um, and then she comes away, her head's too far forward, chin's too far up or too far down. 
and then back to a relaxed neutral. And then right here, you'll see it when she goes back into the engaged neutral. So I'll play that one more time um, where she's in the relaxed neutral and then pulls up into the engaged neutral, thinking about pulling the back of her head in and up the wall. So once they've played with their head positioning a little bit, you can move on to their back. So this one, you're just gonna have your feet slightly away from the wall pulling your back flat against the wall the entire time, and then moving your arms up and down, trying to keep a perfectly straight line from your ear, through your shoulders, through your hips. So the most important thing during this drill is keeping your back flat against the wall the whole time. So on this rep, you can see how her lower back comes off of the wall, um, and we don't wanna see that. We wanna see her back staying flat the whole time. Going into the pre-swing, we wanna make sure we start from a really nice basic seat, and then just a slight lean back onto our tailbone with straight legs, keeping that strong neutral with posture. From the front, we're gonna make sure that her arms are open, that wide angle with her elbows, rather than having her arms close to her body to make sure we still have that functionality in our arms during the swing. The next portion we're going to talk about is position two, and that is getting in front of the sur single so the horse can help you get into that handstand. So here you can see Daniel's position two. His hips are directly over the sur single, and he has that nice flat neutral. In a second here, you're going to watch Diva's shoulder push his hips up and off of the horse. And that's what gets your initial height. Getting that far in front of the sur single can be super intimidating. So here's a couple drills that will help you strengthen those muscles, starting with vaulter push-ups. In this drill, we're going to be super picky about that engaged neutral position because even the slightest variation of your chin or your neck or your stomach can really change the way that your click works. If you're standing above your vaulter, you should be able to see space in between the arm and the torso. If their arms are too tight against their torso, it can cause them to suck under or get stuck. Once they've passed off this position, they can go ahead and go in with the vaulter push-up, really focusing on keeping the torso perfectly straight the entire time and progressively moving your hands further back to your hips. Once those are good, then they can move up to their toes and try the same progression. Moving to the barrel portion, usually I'll just have them get on and show me a very nice position too, making sure that their head's not too high or they're not curved in their torso. Really just looking for their hips to be over the sur single and then finding that engaged neutral. It's okay if they're piked during this drill. We're just looking at their hips, shoulders, arms, and head positioning. We're also going to check from above as well to make sure that their elbows do have space. Once they've passed that off, I'll have them add the pre-swing and position two together. Having them hold each position for one or two counts to practice that intentional body placement. These can be done on the barrel or on the horse. A big part of position two and flights is core stability and shoulder strength. So here are a couple plank variations that are really good to add in the downtime of practice when the kids aren't really doing anything. Or if you wanna add them to a drill circuit during practice, just really focusing on that engaged neutral position with the flat back elongating through the neck out the top of the head. Plank taps are also extremely beneficial to get your shoulder joint comfortable moving that far in front. One of the best things you can do for your flights is get really comfortable in that end position. So either that shoulder stand or the handstand. You wanna make sure you're extending out of your shoulder joint and keeping your head and spine in neutral like we looked at in the pre-swing video. When you practice your handstands on the wall, it's really great to do it with a partner so they can check your alignment. You wanna have a really great straight line through your ankles, knees, hips, through your spine, all the way down to your wrists. So you wanna make sure that your toes aren't off of the wall or your hips are off of the wall, keeping that straight line alignment the whole time. It's good to practice it with your stomach against the wall and your back against the wall. 
but same thing we want to really be checking for that proper alignment making sure we're not piked or disengaged in our back that we're really extending out of our shoulder joint into that straight line Moving to the barrel, when they're first learning to do swings, it's really great for them to do a shoulder stand separately to learn what it's supposed to feel like at the top. When they're first learning, it's okay for them to put their shoulder down on the barrel like this, but eventually we would like them to have their hands on top of the handles and their elbows up to be more realistic for a swing to handstand. We're also going to be checking the alignment here, making sure they don't have too much of an arch or too much of a pike that they're really in that nice straight line. Before we start getting a lot of height in our swings, we want to make sure we know how to come down correctly. So for this drill, you're just going to swing into a push-up position, or you can just go directly into it and practice pulling your weight in front of the sur single and sitting softly into your seat. It's super easy to come down too fast and fall onto your seat bones, so you want to make sure that you're pausing in that arc tension with your weight on your arms and then sitting into that intentional seat. Next, we're going to learn some drills that you can do on the barrel or on the horse at walk, trot, or canter to practice getting comfortable upside down on the horse. First are just mini pops, just practicing rocking your weight on and off your hands. Next is switch kicks from your knee and switch kicks from your foot. And then handstand kisses, which is basically switch kicks with a slight pause in the middle. Next is box pops to a tuck, practicing stacking your hips over your shoulders. Next we have box pops into the full handstand with the plunge down to practice landing slow and soft onto the horse by pulling your shoulders in front of the sur single and keeping a hollow hold position in your body. When you start trying to push into a handstand, it is really important to be comfortable pushing with your arms while you're upside down. So I really like doing this drill with yoga blocks as a progression so they can add a block or take away a block depending on where they're at. It's really important during this drill to try and keep your back as flat as possible. So if you can see in the first one, the vaulter pulled their spine towards the wall as they came down and then brought it back up with them as they came up. Rather in the second one, as they went down, it all collapsed and broke in the lower back. So again, just trying to keep that flat back and engaged core the whole time. The next part of flights that we're going to look at is the leg drive and also how to keep your core connected while you drive. The first thing we're going to learn is how to hold tension in your back line, specifically in a Superman position. The main thing we're going to be looking for in the Superman is that their arms and legs are slightly elevated and their head is kept in that strong neutral that we talked about in video number one. Once they found that really great neutral, then they can go ahead and try and rock back and forth. And we really wanna try and train the drive with our legs together as much as we can. The first drill we're gonna look at is leg lifts off of the end of the barrel. It's really important during these that they're not disengaging their lower back. So when we pause that, we can see there's a little bit of a break in her lower back and her rib cage is still on the barrel. And now she's gonna show us that same drill again, but with correct engagement in her core. So if we see here when she lifted, her rib cage came up and off of the barrel and she's still engaged with her lower back. The next drill we're going to look at is pulls off of the barrel. I like this drill because they don't have to think about pushing with their arms quite yet. They can really focus on just their legs into the handstand. So she's going to show us an incorrect one first where she leaves her rib cage behind at the beginning of the drive. You can see how her rib cage is still against the barrel as her feet come over her head. Then she's going to show us a correct one where at the beginning of the drive her rib cage and core are engaged as well. And you can see as she initiates the drive her rib cage is already up and off of the barrel. Once all of those are super great, they can move on to adding their arms. So something that's really common when you add the arms into the drill is they'll disconnect in their back line. So you can see in the first video how when she is rocking back and forth, just her shoulders are moving. She doesn't have that back line connected. And in the second video, you can see when she bends her arms, her whole body tips like a teeter-totter. 
Once those are comfortable, they can try rocking all the way into a handstand with a spot. To make this drill more challenging, you can try it with a BOSU or just mats and then progressively making the mat smaller until it is just on the ground. Moving on to the barrel, the first swing we're going to do is just a really basic teeter-totter swing, making sure they're going through that position too on the sur single and then keeping their back tension on the way down as well. Once those are comfortable, they can move to trying to swing to a shoulder stand. It's okay if their knees are bent in the beginning because at this point we're looking for progress rather than perfection. Then each practice they can try and get their legs straighter and straighter until they can keep them straight the whole time. The next portion we're going to talk about is the pop, which is the timing of the swing. If you watched the video about position two, then you've already seen this video, but now we're going to dive into why this is so important. So here we see the vaulter hit a really strong position two, and then we're going to watch the horse's withers push his center of gravity up and off of the surcingle, and that is what is referred to as the pop, which is when you hit the correct timing for a swing. The first drill we're going to learn is commonly referred to as flying squirrels or pops to an elevated push-up. The vaulter is going to go to their position 1, to their position 2, and then count ready 1, 2, popping on the 2 and ending in the elevated push-up position with a spot so the coach can make sure the shoulders have pushed in front of the sur single in the correct direction. Now she's going to show what it looks like if you push straight up or straight back from the sur single. So on the horse, she would have ended up on the croup or the back of the pad. This drill can also be done on the movie or the horse still in pieces so they know what it feels like when they do hit the right timing. And once they're doing that really consistently, then they can do it without pausing in the position one and two. The next step is to add everything we learned from the drive video before we were just focusing on the push and the pop, but now you can add the drive going all the way into the handstand position. When they're first trying this, I do like them to pause in each position to make sure that those don't get lost when you add it all together. And then also having a spot on each side, each spotter spotting the shoulder and the hip. Hi, my name is Alejandro Orozco. I am an ADA judge as well as a Mexican judge and an international judge. I'm going to give you a few tips or comments on what we normally see as judges when we see each compulsory in a competition. For a forward swing or a click, form, that's I think one of the main comments in lower levels is just form, form, form. So tight legs, making sure your back does not arch and that alone should make a difference. There's a lot of animations coming on the new guidelines for 2023, so you should have a lot of tools to help you either teach or train a forward click. There's, uh, you'll see all the pictures that are coming, but form, if I have to pick one thing for everybody to work on in their forwards click is both arch back and tight knees will make an impact.